This tutorial is going to teach you all about the multi-rail sweep function, which is found in the surface menu and also works with history, so it's a matrix tool. It's also going to teach you about the edit points, which are found in Profile Placer, and they're kind of an advanced feature of Profile Placer, so we don't teach them until the end of the first week of your class. And they only work together with multi-rail sweep, so one relies upon the other for correct usage. Your edit points, you can change them all day, but if you don't use the multi-rail sweep together with them, they make no difference to your design. Plus, multi-rail sweep, in order to change and affect the results, requires you to use the edit points. So we're going to take a look at both of these features together, and you're going to find powerful new ways to sweep your designs. And even though it's called multi-rail sweep, you can use it on one, two, three or even four rail curves. And you're going to learn how to make three and four rail curves when you come to advanced class. But now that you know how to place one and two rail curves, you'll be able to use this anytime you want to make a lot more um, controlled surfaces, especially when you have complicated profile shapes. So we're going to walk you through this beginning to end. We're going to do it with two rail curves, but it definitely works with one rail curve as well. To begin, start in the Tools menu and select the Ring Rail tool. Click the green arrow to place a size 7 ring rail in the viewports. The next step is to add an outside rail. Like I said, we're going to do this multi-rail sweep function with two rails, although it's fine on just one. So we're going to go to the Outside Rail tool. Click on the rail profile that's currently shown to choose a new one. This opens the library browser and lets you select a new shape. We're going to use the European shank right here. Click that, which populates the rail profile box with the new shape. And remember to click start in order to see it appear in the viewports. Now it has the handles on it, and you're able to adjust these to whatever thickness you want for the ring you're about to make. Side thickness, top thickness, and bottom thickness. Press enter to make the handles disappear and to keep the outside shape in the viewports. And let's place this, these two into a job bag. The next step is to add profiles to this rail. And remember, whenever you have an outside ring rail, you always add the profiles to the inside rail. Select the inside rail, press F6, and click on Add Profiles. This will bring you into the Profile Browser, Profile Placer, sorry, <laughs> which will also open the profile in your viewports together with the handles. And you can use a combination of either the builder controls or the handles to adjust this profile. However, we're going to use the select second rail to assign the height of the profile. You will not be able to assign the height after you choose select second rail. It'll always be stuck to that outside rail, which is a good thing. Just don't try to drag the height slider or you might be disappointed. So to get it to adhere to the height of this outside rail that we set, we're going to run select second rail. Click on the second rail curve and it'll always adhere to the size of that second rail curve. Just remember, don't choose a height slider. It won't do anything at all at this point. Size this down to a reasonable width that you like at the bottom of the ring. We're going to make a tapered ring, and we're going to try several different varieties of it so you get different looks. Press Add to add a new one, and click and drag the position along curve slider to place it at the top. Notice that the height is already correct. Choose the width slider and click and drag it to make it wider at the top, and you'll have a pretty tapered shape in the side view. Now, the key to multi-rail sweep and edit points is you usually have, well, in order to make a difference with it, you need to have two different shaped profiles. Well, you don't need to, but it works best. You'll get more dramatic differences. And the problem is when you sh sweep with a normal two rail sweep or even a one rail sweep sometimes between two profiles with very, very different shapes, you can sometimes get unattractive twists in the surface. And if you ever see those, you'll need to jump into this multi rail sweep function. So we want to show you how it works. So for the top profile, we're going to select a pretty different shape from the bottom one. So click your shape handle or just click on the Edge Profile window, either way you like, to open up the Profile Browser. And let's come over and find a pretty dramatically different shape. This one actually bends outward a little bit. Let's see if that's the right one. 
there it is, this one <laughs> tapers outward a little and is going to make a really interesting side profile. So click it to select it, place it in the viewport to make sure you like the width and everything else about it, and press enter to keep it there. We're now going to go into the multi-rail sweep and learn about the edit points in just a second. Multi-rail sweep runs exactly like sweep 2. However, you just need to press enter after selecting both of the rails. So click on sweep multi, which is found in the surface menu. It's going to ask you to select the rail curves. So choose both of the rail curves and press enter. You're allowed to select one, two, three, or four rail curves at this point. All you need are two, but it doesn't know that, so you have to press enter to tell it, I'm done choosing rail curves. The next step is to select the profiles in the order that the arrows point, and make sure close equals yes, because we're going to create a closed shape. Although it's fine to create open shapes with this method as well. For now, it's a closed shape. Select the two profiles, and tell it you're done by pressing enter and the surface is going to be made. Now this is not going to be markedly different from a sweep two surface. What is different is the next step that we're going to be able to perform because we chose multi-rail sweep. As you notice, when this surface rounds the edges and comes down the side, the side right here sort of flips around and becomes the top of the ring. It doesn't give you an even transition. You also get sort of a funny little wrinkle here where the ring folds inward. And that's because these two shapes are two very different shapes. And it needs to find places on both profiles to connect them in order to create the surface. It's giving you these kind of lumps and these other interesting features where it curves inward. Now maybe this is the result you want. Maybe it isn't. But you want to be able to control that result no matter if it's something you want or something you don't want. So let's see how to really attack this surface finish and get it looking good. To begin, we're just going to job bag this model. Maybe we'll pull it back out later and compare the differences. So select it and put it into a job bag. The next step is to choose the profile, select it, and press F6. Choose MSR to get back your profile handles. And we're going to go to the E, or the edit option, something we haven't done yet in this whole unit of study in primary matrix. So you can click E. You also have the edit option here or the edit option here. Three different ways to access these points. Press E and you'll see the points appear. As you click and drag them, their movements will be mirrored. And this is a good thing. Usually you don't want to break the mirror. If you ever do someday, you have the mirror control points option here. You click that and it changes to no. But for this design, we definitely want them to be mirrored and symmetrical. So click and drag them, and you'll see them both change. Also make sure the bottom ones are located in the corners. And press Enter to keep your changes. Once you press Enter, take a look. Your surface finish just changed. Did you see that? I'm going to hit Undo. And that's the way it originally was. And I'm going to hit Redo so you can see the difference. Wow, that was major. We really fixed some of those strange features that we got where the surface was creating a little bump or groove for us or a little wrinkle. We'll see what's going on in the bottom profile and maybe see about adjusting that as well. To do so, and it doesn't really matter what viewport you would do this in, I just wanted you to see in the side view that they were mirrored. Select the bottom profile and press F6. Choose MSR, and remember, you don't get the edit points until you press E, edit in the command line, or edit in the builder, any one of those three methods. So press E, and you'll see those points. The default positions for these points is assigned by the builder. It's however they were drawn by the developer, and however they were assigned during the development process. So we're going to click and drag them to a more interesting location. Same thing at the bottom. And it doesn't matter. You could set them up so that they're exactly like the one on top or so that they're dramatically different. And just see the changes that it makes in your surface. Once you've dragged them to a new location, you can press Enter. 
Or if you want to make other changes about this ring, press M, which brings you back to all the move handles. E brings you to the edit handles, and M brings you to the move handles. Notice that once you hit edit again, it saves your changes, and this is what's making a difference because we use multi-rail sweep. Just keep in mind, these edit points do nothing unless you've used multi-rail sweep to create the surface. Press enter, and you'll see it change once more. There it goes. Definitely don't click and drag things around on the viewports while it's thinking. <laughs> it has some major thinking to do, but look at what it's done for our surface. This is quite a beautiful result. Remember when we first created it, we had really a big wrinkle right here where it was trying to accommodate for the shape of the top profile? Not anymore. We've got a beautiful side shape that sweeps down from a very flat shape, even one that's curved inward, because that original profile that's tapered outward that we got, to one that poofs outward. And it's just really beautiful, beautiful pattern. So we are able to get tremendous control over the surface finishes using these multi-rail edit points. See how it tapers right down here nicely to this nice groove where it touches the European style shank, the European style outside rail. It's really a terrific finish and I can tell you from my experience that in earlier versions of Matrix this would cause you to do a lot of different kinds of modelings putting extra rails out here to get this kind of control over this portion of the surface. Because what multi-rail sweep is actually doing, let's job bag this and talk about it for a minute. Wherever you see the two green points on one profile and the two green edit points on the other profile, it's placing extra rails out there. They're imaginary rails, <laughs> but it's doing it nonetheless. You can't see them, but inside the mind of the program, it's got extra rails out there. And as you know from your one rail sweep versus your two rail sweep, more rails gives you more control. But you don't have to worry about how to build these. You will if you come to advanced class, you can worry about it all you want. But in primary class, you don't have to worry about how to build them anymore. You can just use your multi-rail sweep and it puts them in there for you and gives you control over where they're placed by using the edit points. Okay. So let's try one more change to this. We're going to change the shape of the top profile and use the edit points to really perfect the shape one more time, just to make sure that you understand all the subtleties of this tool. So select the curve. We've got a job bag, so we're not changing anything beyond repair. Press F6 and choose Move, Scale, and Rotate. When you see the profile handles appear, click on the profile shape to open the profile browser at the bottom of your screen. We're going to click, choose a nice groovy profile, <laughs> scroll, click and drag to scroll down and choose something really, really interesting with the grooves and the little bumps and stuff. Here's one right here that we're going to try. Remember, you don't get any change until you press enter, which is also a good thing because you can try the width and some other things on this before you move on. So press enter to see the results. Now there is a really pretty shape. I'm going to use the plastic shading mode to show you how that looks. There it is. Ooh, it's very, very smooth. It's a very nice design. And same as before, if you want to change the way it sweeps into the bottom most profile, simply select the curve, press F6, choose MSR, Go to your little E, edit, or edit in the builder, and adjust the control points. Remember, with each profile that come out, comes out, they're going to be placed in slightly different locations. So let's click and drag and see how this changes our surface. There you go. It's really quite fun to play with. It gives you control and real visual interest um, for your designs. Let's compare this. Um, Anytime you need to move something around, that's the only time I have to turn. I usually turn off history because that doesn't make it think so hard about it. And when it thinks really hard, as you know, it can sometimes cause your computer to crash. So let's turn off history, move this around, and compare all three results for you. Okay, here's the ring after we adjusted. The first one's the ring after we adjusted the profile. The second one's the ring after we adjusted the sweep edit points. And we'll 
drag them off here to show you one more example. Don't try this at home. I can move them because I'm a professional. No, <laughs> it's best if you don't um, move them around if you don't need to. We'll go back to the shaded view where you can really see what those curves on the surface are doing. And we'll turn off the grid to take a look. Okay, so here's our first one where we got that funny bump because we hadn't adjusted our edit points yet. We also got kind of a funny wrinkle here where the ring was trying to fold in order to accommodate the top shape and the bottom shape. In the second example, after we adjust our edit points, much more smooth. Also take a look at the top of the ring. We don't get this funny imaginary ridge here that sort of throws a wrench in our surface finish. Instead, we've got a beautiful taper all the way from the top of this profile to the bottom of this one. Really nice shape and a well-defined inside as well. And finally, when we changed the profile shape and adjusted the edit points, we got another several different options for this nice ridged and grooved design. Again, none of them with twists or anything, so we can control that, get all the twists and the funny creases out of that surface using the edit points. Okay, and all that's possible because we chose this multi-rail sweep tool. Don't forget that the two work together. Without one, you can't have the other, and vice versa. Without edit points, you can't get as good control over your multi-rail sweeps.